It's nearly Christmas time, isn't it, Brad? It is. So let's pull a Christmas cracker to celebrate. They are some crap Christmas crackers, mate. Let's right, see what we've got, eh? So we've got some stickers, and I've got a hat. And let's read the joke, shall we? Why does Santa have three gardens? I don't know, why does he? So he can hoe, hoe, and hoe. Leonardo DiCaprio is a very handsome man. So much so that when People Magazine held their annual Most Beautiful Person Award in 1998, they held a writing contest fully believing that he'd be the winner. So imagine their surprise when the winner wasn't DiCaprio, but an angry drunken dwarf called Hank. First things first though, for anyone who thinks we're being unfair describing a person that way and doesn't know exactly which angry drunk dwarf we're talking about, we're talking about Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf, famous for his numerous appearances on the Howard Stern Show. Go have sex with Jesus Christ, you f It's basically sum up what Hank was all about. He'd get really drunk on the Howard Stern Show and then just angrily shit talk people who called in. Shut up, you little asshole! This led to Stern coining the oh so original nickname of Hank the Angry Drunk Dwarf. He's Hank, he's Hank the Angry Dwarf. Is that what he's known for then, just appearing on the Howard Stern show? Mostly, yeah, but his fame from appearing on that show did allow him to indulge in his favourite hobby of just getting shit-faced all the time. And he parlayed his appearances on the Howard Stern show into numerous public appearances at everything from bachelor parties to strip clubs, all of which he, of course, drank at for free. So what did he do at these appearances? Well, he'd get drunk and insult you. If they pull your I've brain in a parrot, it would fly backwards. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, pal. Keep going. And that was it, because that was his whole thing on the Howard Stern show. If people would call up and try and insult him, and he'd just insult them back. Good, I hope you die. I hope your mother dies. Uh, I've, I've, I've had sex with your mother. Trust yeah? me, she's no good. Yeah? If part of his shtick was that he was going to get drunk and insult your guests, does that mean you have to buy him drinks on that? Pretty much, yeah, but people did. And I think there's a great quote from Hank where he says, After I appeared on the Howard Stern show, I never had to pay for another drink again in my life. And when people said, like, don't you feel like you're being exploited? He was like, well... I'm getting paid to go to bachelor parties and strip clubs and drink, and then every time I go to a bar, I get all my drinks paid for for free. So that, I think that's one of the things that he got really annoyed about when people assume that he was being exploited. And well, I'm not really now, I'm being paid a fortune to drink. <laughs> I'm getting paid a fortune to do stuff I used to do for free. You can't really say I'm being exploited at this point, can you? I really like Hank's attitude towards that. And it reminds me of a great quote from Sarah Millican, one of my favourite comedians, where they asked her, so Sarah, how did you get into comedy? And her response was, well, people were calling me a fat bitch and laughing at me. So I thought, fuck it, I might as well charge him. <laughs> Which is a fucking brilliant way of like, looking at it that way. And Hank's reasoning was similar. He's like, well, I'm going to go out and get shit-faced and like, trash talk everyone in the bar who calls me a dwarf or like, a midget, so I might as well get paid for it. And so that's a really good point. And as an aside, Hank did insist on being referred to as a dwarf, and if you called him a midget or a little person, that was a surefire way to get into like, open your ass sideways with a pool cue and then just like lay down a torrent of abuse on you, so that was probably not a good idea. He's a midget. A I'm dwarf. A dwarf. A dwarf. Sorry, sorry. Don't call me. I'll go beat the hell out of All right, all right, man. It was an accident. So what does Hank, the angry drunk dwarf, have to do in any way with People magazine? Well, in 1998, People held a poll to discern who the public felt was the most beautiful person alive at that point. And they assumed that Leonardo DiCaprio would be the shoe-in for that year. So obviously, I'm saying the words 1998. What film pops into your head? With DiCaprio? Yes. Titan. There we go. Because at that point, Titanic was hot. So executives naturally assumed that if they held a poll, who's going to win? It's going to be Leonardo DiCaprio because he's like the person who's on the front cover of all the magazines this year. And Leonardo DiCaprio didn't win. Hank the Angry Drunk Dwarf did. How? He was a writing candidate. Because obviously they said, oh, you can vote for Leonardo DiCaprio, you can vote for these other douchebags. Or... Feel free to suggest your own, thinking like, well, they always suggest someone stupid. So I believe it started on message boards on the internet, and then Howard Stern caught wind of it and said to his listeners, don't you think it'd be funny if Hank won this year? I encourage you to write into People Magazine, expressing your support for Hank being named most beautiful person. <laughs> You're the man, Hank. So did People magazine have any intention at all of listening to the people? 
Not really, no. They assume that Leonardo DiCaprio was going to win. They assume, oh, he's, he's hot this year. Of course he's going to win. So they charged ahead under that assumption and they actually printed the issue with Leonardo DiCaprio's face on it, declaring him the winner before the voting period had even ended. How many votes did Hank actually get over him? Was it like a small or a massive margin? No, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, I think in the end, he got about 14,000 votes, which was pretty close to what Hank got, because Hank got 230,000. <laughs> and by the end of it, he had 17 times more votes than Leonardo DiCaprio, and he still didn't win. So just so we're all on the same page here, People Magazine held a mock poll they had no intention whatsoever of listening to unless it precisely agreed with the opinions of its executives. Media analysts would later conclude that Hank's surprising victory as a writing candidate was a deliberate and targeted fuck you from the public to the established media hierarchy, a statement they wouldn't be the gullible, malleable masses they thought they were, and that they would reject the hyper-idealised, narrow-minded version of masculinity the magazine was trying to shit down their throats and instead celebrate Hank's inner beauty Either that or they thought it was really fucking funny. So DiCaprio came in second and they put him in first? No, he didn't come second, he came third. <laughs> because to really sell how little the executives at People magazine actually thought of what the public's opinion was, DiCaprio came third after Hank and Rick fucking Flair. You're talking about all men, Rick Flair. <laughs> so he lost to a drunk dwarf and the nature boy, Rick Flair, which to be fair, that's okay. You know what? If I was there and someone said, you're less handsome or less beautiful um, than Ric Flair, I'd look at him and go, yeah, I can see that. I can see why the public would think that. <laughs> this just sums up what People Magazine executives were thinking like, oh, we can, oh, the public, we can definitely predict what they're going to think. DiCaprio didn't even come second. He came third after a drunk dwarf and a wrestler <laughs> called the Nature Boy who just screams the word woo and walks around everywhere in a sex kimono. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so in their list, is DiCaprio actually down as first? He's first, but they did do a little profile on Hank. You know, the person who did win the public vote by over 200,000 votes. And they sent a journalist to go talk to him and interview him on his thoughts on what it was like to be like the most beautiful person in the public's eye. And I think Hank found it funny. <laughs> and I think he, then he later drunk dialed that journalist. So I like, shine on you crazy diamond. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually quite poignant his interview where he, he like waxes poetic about the idea that people think he's beautiful and he can't tell it if it's like, um, if it's funny or if it's sad, because obviously he knew it was a joke, but at the same time, is he thinking, are they celebrating my inner beauty? And then he thinks like, what is the nature of inner beauty and all that? So it's, it's quite poignant, but instead of putting that on the front of the magazine, which is a really like an interesting look into a person who doesn't conform to like the narrow version of what beauty is according to that publication, but to explore what it means when he's voted the most beautiful person. It's like, no, let's put his picture of Leonardo DiCaprio smiling on the front. I feel really bad for Hank because obviously like, they sent a journalist out to speak to him and he did like kind of get somewhat emotional and try to like unpack what winning meant. Like, is it a joke? Do people actually think I'm beautiful inside? And instead of like exploring that and using it to take like a nuanced opinion on what is the nature of beauty and our role as perpetuating this little unrealistic stereotype that not everyone conformed to. It's like, now nah, fuck it, look at Leonardo DiCaprio, hasn't he got lovely cheekbones? <laughs> the thing is though, like, even if DiCaprio hadn't have won, he'd have been used to that for how long he got snubbed for a fucking Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he really gave a shit? <laughs> that year he's like up for an Oscar, and they're like, winner, Hank the Tangry Trump <laughs> Dwarf! That's what they should have done, something the, the Academy had falls that had done that, but they didn't, no. Yeah, so Hank got to be like the public winner, which I think is, it's, he was the people's champion. And you know what? I'd rather have support of the people than the, whoever the shit lords at bloody uh, People magazine were like, oh yeah, the public will eat up these pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio, aren't his eyes dreamy? Photoshop him so his eyebrows are sharper than they're supposed to be. Sadly, Hank was only able to enjoy being people's most beautiful person of 1998 for a couple of years because he passed away in 2001. In keeping with the theme of him being constantly shit on by the traditional media, news of his death barely made a blip on the radar of most traditional media outlets. Why? Because his death was announced the morning of 9-11. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, if you happen to be having a drink anytime soon, like have another one for Hank and then another 
and then another because he'd have really liked that. No, seriously, he'd have loved that shit. When he died, people smuggled bottles of Jack Daniels to his funeral and hid them in his coffin. And his mum was really okay with it because she said Hank would have found it funny. So after that third drink, have another. And then drunk dial a reporter for People magazine because that's what he'd have done. So if you're still watching the video for some reason after the facts ended, um, why not entertain yourself in the comments by voting for Fact Fiend's Most Beautiful Person Award of 2017. Um, who, and feel free to include writing candidates who you think deserve it more than myself or Brad. Because uh, my money's on Idris Elba. <laughs> because you know what? People Magazine missed a fucking trick in 2017. They've ignored the public vote and said this year, the sexiest man alive is Blake Shelton. And I discussed this with Brad before I recorded this and Brad's exact response was, who the fuck is Blake Shelton? <laughs> and I googled him and I put his picture up. And I should mention as well, the first autocomplete for Blake Shelton, the one after it comes up, slash Idris Elba. So you can look at the comparison between him and the guy who lost. And Brad's reaction was, he's all right. So he's, he's, he's no Idris yeah, Elba. He's, he's, not, he's not a bad looking dude. When you compare him to like, the thing, the one that I would say is like, why was he not Idris Elba? He should have been Idris Elba. And they should have just put as well, any picture of Idris Elba makes him look like an absolute don. So obviously it was all like the fancy photos of him, like for magazine shoots and stuff, wearing a cool suit. But even if they just put the picture of Stacker Pentecost from Pacific Rim and said, who do you think's sexier? Stacker Pentecost piloting his robot or Blake Shelton with his shitty guitar songs. So they could have put, here's, who do you think's sexy? Heimdall. <laughs> On all the comparison pictures, they seem to be finding the most stupid looking pictures of this. What's he called? Shelton? Blake Shelton. No, they're, they're not stupidest pictures. That's the picture People magazine took. The one they took of him on the front cover looks like they photoshopped it to make his eyes look ever so slightly smaller. <laughs> it's got super creepy squint glare. The, what they should have done, it shouldn't have been a vote between Blake Shelton. It should have been a vote between the various characters Idris Elba has played. <laughs> so it's, who's sexier? Heimdall or Stacker Pentecost? Or Luther. Oh my god, Luther. My top 10 anime fight scenes, Luther versus that fucking door, man. Holy shit. How did he not win? I don't get it. It's not fair. Instead we get this- This has gone over my head. Fair. <laughs> someone, got that, <laughs> someone got that reference and they're now pissing their pants. So that one was for you, Joe, my friend, who will get the reference who watches these videos. People Magazine, man. How, just vote for the dude you see trending on Twitter when you release like, your thing and say, oh no, JK, it wasn't really Blake Shelton, it's actually this dude. Because they released a great video to celebrate his win as Sexiest Man Alive. And it was stare into the eyes of the Sexiest Man Alive and melt. And it's just a picture, it's just a video of Blake Shelton just laughing as they like mention things to him. And the top comment was, I'm dr my vagina's drier than a Popeye's biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> should have been Idris Elba as well. For that tweet that he sent out when I think BuzzFeed published an article, or maybe it was Gawker, there was a picture of Idris Elba on the set of a movie and it just looked like he had a massive dog. Because <laughs> he had like a big, there was like a big lump in his trousers down here. And I think the headline was, is this Idris Elba's dick or what? Question mark. With like the dick circled. And he tweeted it out and said, uh, sorry to disappoint everyone, it was actually a microphone wire, but thanks for the 100,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it should have been him. It should have been him.